Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna look at the light mode and dark mode footer for the upcoming Canvas starter site. For this video, we're gonna run through the build notes for this particular resource, and I'm gonna show you how to get to those build notes. So from the My Listing Club website, that's mylisting.club, right here on the homepage, we're gonna click on this My Listing Starter Sites card. We're then gonna click Explore, and then we're gonna click into the starter site we're reviewing, which in this case is Canvas, okay? So this top left one. Scrolling down the product page for Canvas until we get to the build notes. And we're gonna, like I said, in this particular video, look at the footer. So I'm gonna expand the footer toggle here and we're gonna run through all these elements that are um, part of this footer, okay? All right, so let's dive in. The default My Listing footer has been replaced with a custom footer built for Elementor Pro, sorry, built with Elementor Pro giving the website owner much flexibility re regarding where and how to display a footer using Elementor display conditions. If you're not familiar with Elementor display conditions, you can click this link right here. Uh, basically what they do is they, the display conditions can dictate where a certain template shows up on your, on an Elementor based website, whether it's a certain page, certain pages, certain posts, categories of posts, so on and so forth, and even hiding them. Um, there's just lots of options with Elementor display conditions, but basically for the footer, uh, as it's implemented on this site is we're just, in, uh, we're just doing it for the entire site. So keep things simple for this. Okay. One way, one thing you might want to consider on, as you go along is maybe you want to create like a distraction free page on your site where you don't want a header and footer involved at all. Um, in which case you can set the page template to, um, canvas mode. Or you can use the display conditions to say, I don't want to, I want to show the header, but I don't want to show the footer or vice versa. Or you can use the display conditions to just um, hide the header and footer on a page. So um, yeah, that's what you can do there. Let me go ahead and show you, show you this. I'm going to pull up the, the light mode version first, because that's going to be the default version with the Canvas theme. Uh, sorry, with the Canvas starter site. So how you get to those is you go to uh, your WordPress dashboard, then go to templates and then theme builder. You can also just go click on templates here and you can do a search for footer. So there's two different ways you can get to it, but you can go that way and then you can go to the, the footer tab, or like I said, you can just go straight to the theme builder menu item and click footer, the footer tab, okay? So let me go ahead and bring up the light mode version. I'm going to show you what I mean by the display conditions real quick if you're not familiar. Okay, so if you click on this little arrow down here in the up arrow in the bottom left, you have this display conditions option. Okay, in here, like I said, you've got lots of options. I'm just applying the footer to the entire site, but you can do all sorts of things. Pages, posts, um, the, whether it's the author, an author is of a certain page, uh, if it's a WooCommerce based page, it's lots of things you can do. Okay. So I'm just going to do entire site just to keep things simple because it's okay in this case to show the footer across the whole site. And then of course there's the exclude option. You can say include with the entire site and then you could add another condition that says, okay, let's show it on the whole site, but let's exclude it on a certain posts or whatever. Okay. You get the idea. Okay, so that is the display conditions. Let me jump back over to the notes. Elementor footer templates are far more powerful, flexible, and easier to work with when compared to the default options that my listing provides. So to show you to show you different a difference here, uh, let's go. I'm gonna pull up a new tab here. I'm going to pull up the My Listing main demo. So this is from the My Listing developers. It's their, their main demo, as I said. We're going to scroll down here. This is the this is how they demo the footer. So you see down here, it leaves a lot to be desired. Um, I'm not even sure what this is. A bunch of jelly beans down here. Um, yeah, it's just not great. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not great. Um, and your own your options are pretty limited. So if you go under theme options. Theme tools and then theme options. And then footer. We see here that when you turn this stuff on, it's very limited. Okay, we can put a background color, it's not a big deal. You can show some widgets here. And what I may try to do 
in addition to, um, to these templates. I may try to build out an L, uh, build out a footer with just using the my listing theme and some widgets. The club is partnered with a WordPress widget company, um, so we may be able to leverage that um, if, to, to do certain things here with the widgets. But at that point, um, the widgets are far more powerful. I don't want to discredit the partner that's got the widgets uh, solution. It is far, far po more powerful than just putting stuff in the footer. So I don't want to diminish that by any means. But what I'm saying in, in just regards to the footer, like if we're if we're going that far to spend money just to to do uh, to do widgets in the footer, you might as well just use Elementor Pro because then that unlocks all the ton the many many other features of Elementor Pro. So maybe hopefully you see what my point is there. But if you're just going straight my listing, you'll, you see how limited it is, and then you got to know how to work with widgets. Um, yeah, totally, totally up to you how you want to go about this, obviously, but. As you can see here, it's just very, very limited with my listing, what the options are. So the only thing that I use here is the show, the back to top button, okay? Which is, let's go to the front end of the site. And I need to find a page actually that's a bit longer so I can show this. Uh, let's see, that's not gonna do it, let's try. There we go. So you see the scroll the tops down there. It's got to be a long enough page to where it, where it kicks in. That's the only option that I I ever do under the uh, footer options for the my listing theme. Okay. All right. So enough of that. Okay. So we've got our. Let me close this down and uh, let's see, see where we're at here. Okay. Logo. I added Elementor's image widget chose the canvas favicon and configured it to link to the site URL, URL dynamically. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that. So I added this image. It it pulls in the favicon just for simplicity. Uh, I actually think it's a pretty cool look though too, as personally, but I pulled in, just pulled in the favicon icon that I'm using for the canvas site. And you'll see here, it's linking to a custom URL and then dynamically using Elementor tags, we are just pulling in the site or linking to the site URL. So if somebody clicks this icon right here, it's gonna take them to the homepage. So let's go ahead and try that out. So here's the icon. Well, it's actually an image, but it look, kind of looks like an icon. So we'll click that and it's gonna take you to the homepage. All right, so that's how that works. Moving on down, social icons. Each icon's link options, open in a new window, add no follow, et cetera, are configured according to SEO best practices. What that simply means is that each of these is ready to go. So let's just say hypothetically you want to use the Facebook link. I already have the link option set to open in a new window and add no follow. According to the SEO best practices, that's what you want. You don't want to follow that link to Facebook. You definitely want to open it in a new window because you don't want people leaving your website when it's an external with an external resource outside of your actual website. Okay? Moving on down, copyright. The copyright is dynamically displayed using the current date, time, dynamic tag with the copyright symbol prepended. So the copyright symbol is added before the actual text, which in this case is the site name. Well, the site name is appended. So uh, it's better if I just if I just show this one to you here. Okay, so here we go. Let's just walk through this. So I've got the, this heading widget here. It's set as an HTML html tag as paragraph so it doesn't impact seo at all which is what you want um, we're using the dynamic tag current date and time so that's where you get this 2003 the date in there okay uh, i've got the format set up just to show the year which is what we want we are prepending prepending adding before the copyright symbol so before the 2003 2023 date we're prepending the copyright symbol, and then we're appending the word canvas after that. Okay, so that's how this is dynamically created. The only piece of this that's not dynamic um, that you'll want to change is where it says canvas. So really simple to do. You can just put your site name in there. Maybe someday they will allow all that to be dynamic. And, and there's actually a, a club partner, uh, a new club partner um, that will be announced at some point here soon, but it's the dynamic shortcodes plugin. That is one of the, that's one plugin where you could 
have actually dynamically plugged in the site name in, into this area right here. Maybe someday Elementor will allow that natively. Okay, so that's the copyright. Easier to show you than explain it in this particular case. Navigation. To comply with SEO best practices, I use the native WordPress menu system. So that's here. Appearance. Menus. I built three menus. Footer Explorer, Footer Legal and Sitemap, and Footer Platform. So those are all built within WordPress and the native WordPress menu system, is what, which is what you want for SEO and maintainability of the website. You don't want to have to go and maintain all of these links individually. Um, and again, for SEO best practices, you want these to actually be getting those nav tags for, for SEO. All right. So those three menus are created. If you're, if you're a customer and you get this, all you need to do is, like I said, you go in this area of WordPress, uh, select the menu that you want, and then you just edit the add, remove the pages that you want to add. To start with, uh, there's an explore menu. And I typically populate this with real links to the starter sites, um, listings based on the listing type and whatnot. Uh, for now, I just have custom links in here because this site is going to have a lot of listing types. So it just makes sense to leave this open for the customer to add what they want. So the, the customer would go in here and just customize this link, these links, however they want. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, email capture. Included is an Elementor form set up to capture email for those interested in your business before launch. Configure the form with your preferred newsletter email solution. I prefer MailPoet. Use the form for something completely different or remove the form altogether. Regarding the text above the form, the site name is dynamically displayed using the site title dynamic tag. Again, this is let me just show you versus describing this. You can read all this yourself, but let's run through this. So here's the form. Above the form, what I was saying was I'm dynamically using the site title tag, okay? So I'm saying, hey, let's insert the, the name of the site, which is Canvas in this case. Before the word Canvas, before the, the site name, I wanna prepend, okay? Subscribe to the, and then blank, and then it inserts the site name, which is Canvas. And then we're gonna append the words newsletter for our popular platform's latest news and offers, period, okay? So that is how that's built. Just edit that text and then edit this dynamic tag however you want and off you go. Okay, it doesn't have to, if you don't want it to be dynamic, it doesn't have to be. You could just, you can just remove the tag right here by clicking this icon and type in whatever you want. It does not have to be dynamic. I just recommend trying to be as dynamic as you can wherever you can. All right. So I, I explained all of that. Let's look at the form. This form is gonna pre-populate the email of the user. So if a user is logged into the website already, it's gonna pre-populate their email address in here to save them a step, okay? What this is gonna do is actions after submit, it is going to, you're gonna choose, you can choose your, however it is that you want to send your newsletters. Uh, again, I recommend and use MailPoet myself. There's a discount a generous discount in the club for using it that you would, if you had MailPo installed, you would, you could just select that from this dropdown or you could go with MailChimp or MailerLite or whatever it is that you use there to collect and uh, those emails and add them to your newsletter, okay? Okay, so I think that rounds out the, the features. Uh, these are already available. You can get them from the club. I'll link to them after this video. But, uh, these templates are already available, and let's go ahead and look at the, de the design a little bit more. All right, let's put these in responsive mode here. Okay, so obviously this is large screen, desktop mode. We've got the, the link, an image here, like I said, linking to the site, pulling the site favicon, linking to the website. Uh, so got some lorem ipsum text here, just fill in whatever you want here or move it. These uh, social media links. Over here, we've got links to actual pages that are part of this starter site that are gonna be built out. Uh, you, obviously, you can adjust these to be whatever you want. And then I already explained these Explorer links and why they say custom links in there. You can change those easily. We already went through this whole stay informed section, except for this part right here. 
And this is a saying, but signing up, you confirm you agree with our privacy policy, and then this links to the actual privacy policy page. Okay, down here, uh, we went through the dynamic copyright. Over here, we've got links to the privacy policy, terms and conditions, and then the sitemap page. Okay, the sitemap page, if you're not aware, this is an HTML version of the sitemap. Uh, for SEO, uh, you know, like, browse, like crawl, search engine crawlers um, use an XML version of the sitemap. So it's more, it's code based, whereas an HTML version is more, it's visual based. So you build that, you build that visually. And that's what this sitemap right here links to. It helps, it's, it's for the users, whereas an XML sitemap is for the, the search engine crawlers, okay, behind the scenes. All right, so that is desktop, and then we see that everything is mobile responsive. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, so that is light mode, and then let's just jump over to dark mode, and we will get you on your way. So again, templates, and you can just do a search for footer. Okay, so no need to walk through all of this again, but uh, I do want to show you the design, you know, how things look. Everything looks good on hover. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. Cool. Check out the mobile responsiveness. That looks good. And this looks good. Okay, guys. Uh, Hope you're excited about these templates and uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. See ya.